New York City. It's almost midnight, and the theaters west of Broadway are turning out their lights. One theater is going to remain dark for several weeks. For tonight, after 300 performances, Gordon Dunning, the eminent producer, has rung down the final curtain on another great success. In his office, adjoining the upper balcony, Dunning has a visitor, his celebrated star, Valerie Stanton. But you're being ridiculous, Valerie. Just answer my question, Gordon. Did you give that story out to the newspapers? Well, of course I did. I said you were turning down Gunther's offer. But your next play would be for me, as usual. Then you'll retract it. Look, Valerie, if that play means so much to you, I'll get it away from Gunther. We'll do it together. We're never going to do anything together again. It isn't the play. It's Michael Morell. Yes. I'm going to marry him. <laughs> marry him? It isn't funny, Gordon. I happen to be in love. And what about me? I picked you up a nobody. I taught you how to walk and dress and act. I taught you how to get on top of this dog-eat-dog world. You've something I've created and I won't let you go. Maybe that's love, too. I don't know. Right now it's hate and contempt for your stupidity. I've had to knock a lot of silly ideas out of your head in ten years' time, and if you don't Gordon, think I'll do... are you going to issue that retraction? No. No, I think I'll issue a confidential statement to Morell. I have an excellent and somewhat morbid imagination. You're out of your mind. I don't doubt it. I get a little crazy whenever you're out of my sight. I might even kill you. Only why kill you when I can kill whatever attraction you have for Morell? That's smarter. You can't get away with lies. He won't believe you. I'll tell him things about you we'll never forget. Now, please. Tell Morell you'll never see him again because you really love me. Oh, come on, Val. Let's forget it. Put your arms around <laughs> me. Admit me that I'm... go. Val. Val, I'm warning you. If you walk out of here alone, I'm going straight to Michael Morell. I'll tell him things that'll make him wish he'd never seen Keep you. Keep away from me. Things that'll make him sick every time he thinks of you. Let me go. I'll never have Morell or any other man Stop as long it. as I... Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Sam, you all alone? Did Mr. Dunning come with you? No, he'll be along later. Well, we sure closed the show in style tonight, didn't we? Maybe now we can have that vacation we've been... Miss Val, is anything wrong? I'm so tired, Nancy. Then see that you send Mr. Dunning home early, Miss Val, and you get some sleep. Anything you want me to do? No, no. I'll just lie down for a moment. Good night, Miss Val. I killed Gordon. I killed him. They've found him by now. They're coming for me. They must know I did it. They must know I... But do they know? No one saw me go up there. And when I came down, I went straight to my dressing room. No one saw me until I came out of the dressing room. They don't know who did it. Maybe they'll never know. I'll get it, Miss Val. No. No, I'll answer it. Hello? Oh, Michael... Yes, yes, I'm all right. Darling, I've got to tell you I... Gordon? No, no, he hasn't arrived yet. I'm... Oh, I love you, too. No, no, you'd better not come over. Yes, yes, I'll phone you the minute he leaves. No, dear, nothing. Good night, my darling. Oh, why did this horrible thing have to happen? Why... Michael, five weeks ago, I... I didn't even know you. This wouldn't have happened if I hadn't met you. I love you, darling. Five weeks ago, Gordon was giving a party after the performance. And on our way to his apartment... I've got a surprise for you, Val. Peter Gunther's coming to the party. How nice of you, Gordon. Yeah, I want him there so you can tell him yourself. Tell him what? That he can peddle head of gabbler somewhere else. The part's not right for you. I happen to think the part is right. Don't be absurd. A smart, sophisticated comedian like you playing a neurotic woman who kills herself because true love has passed her by. My, my, you make it sound fascinating. That's more than you'll do. Now, about tonight, there'll be quite a few people there. They, they expect us to be enchanted with each other. Don't worry. I'll put on the slightly breathless act. Is Marion coming? Of course. I invited the whole cast. Matter, you two still battling? There's never been a battle. She merely detests me. Nonsense. Marion's a fine actress. I can't help it if she thinks she's still in love with me. Oh, darling, of course you can't. Well, no matter what you say, Marion, you've got to admire Valerie. <laughs> That's quite a performance she's putting on over there for Peter Gunther. Monotonous, isn't it? Trouble with Valerie is she's here today and here tomorrow. Oh, why don't you leave her alone then? I mean, off the stage. I do. 
I can take her or leave her. Which seems to be more than Gordon Dunning can do. Well, keep your fingers crossed, sweetie. She may be working for Gunther next season, in which event you and Gordon... Keep your opinions to yourself, Jeff, and out of your newspaper column. And stop giving yourself away, darling. Why, everyone can see that you're still carrying that old, old torch. Lights up like a Christmas tree every time you're near Gordon. Uh-oh. Who's that? Who's Val talking to now? I don't know. Poor little man. Do you think I should go and warn him? And as soon as I saw you, I simply had to come over and introduce myself. Well, well uh, how nice of you, Miss Stanford. I think I... you've written the most wonderful book of the year. Oh, but... Have you ever thought of dramatizing your novel? Well, I, I'm hardly in a position Of course to... you are. And that's exactly what I think I... I beg your pardon. I know it's none of my business, but I'm afraid you're talking to the wrong man. What do you mean? You're talking about Mr. Putnam's book. Of course I am. Mr. Putnam's in the other room at the bar. This gentleman's Mr. Crouch, oh. his agent. <laughs> well, I've been trying to tell you, Miss Stanton. Oh, Mr. Crouch, forgive me, but do tell Mr. Putnam how I feel about it. <laughs> yes, yes, I will indeed. Yes, I'll, I'll tell him right away. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Are you grinning at me? Of course not. I also have great difficulty remembering names at a party. Thank you. I don't believe we've met Mr. Uh... Morell. Michael Morell. How do you do? And may I ask your name? I am Valerie Stanton. Delighted. And what do you do, Miss Stanton? Did you say what do you do or how do you do? <laughs> oh, but did I say something I shouldn't? I am an actress. How charming. And are you a good actress? Promising. Well, that explains why I've never heard of you. I don't go to the theater nowadays. Oh, too many drafts, Mr. Mortimer. Uh, Morell. No, it's just that I prefer my emotions straight, not wrapped up in ribbons and cellophane as they are in the theater. Oh, I see. A realist. Don't you ever take them off, or aren't you staying? Take what off? Your gloves. Oh, no. No, no, no. Actually, I'm never without them. Really? I had a friend like that. He was hardly ever without his gloves, too. Tommy Belcher, middleweight champion of England for two years. Do you like boxing? I've never been so tempted to try it. <laughs> Who brought you here? Another old friend of mine, Peter Gunther. He dragged me away from an exciting game of chess. Oh, Gordon. Yes, Val. Oh, here's someone you must meet. He's never heard of me. Are uh, you? Uh, and he's also a member of the Anti-Theater Guild, Mr. Uh... Morell. How do you do? I'm Gordon Dunning. What's this about the Anti-Theater Guild? Well, as a matter of fact, Miss Stanton has just changed my entire attitude to the theater. Well, do you mind if I run along? Thank you for a very pleasant party. Oh, but it's hardly begun. See you at lunch tomorrow, Miss Stanton. What? One thirty at the Chatelain. Don't be late. Who the devil is... And why did you make a date with him? You know we're having lunch with McCormick tomorrow? Oh, what'd you say? I said you know we're yes, having lunch... Yes, 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 yes. Cancel it, Gordon. Thank goodness the mob's gone. I think I'll run on home myself, Gordon. In a minute. How did Gunther take the news? I didn't tell him. I want to do that play. In heaven's name, why? Because I want to find out if I'm good enough to do it. Well, for your information, you're not. And one rehearsal will prove it to you. Well, I have a right to find that out for myself. I've let you dominate me and tell me what I can and cannot do until I've lost myself completely. I've made you one of the biggest stars on Broadway. Isn't that I'm not grateful to you, Gordon? No, but you're convinced you don't need me anymore, is that it? Now that you've put it that way, yes. Oh, no. No, you don't snuff out ten years of my life with a snap of your fingers. You don't know me as well as you think you do. Maybe that works both ways, Gordon. Good night. I'll see you tomorrow. At I lunch. I think we settled that. I'm having lunch tomorrow with Michael Morell. I was late for lunch, Michael. Purposely late. My little revenge for some of your remarks at Gordon's party. But then as we sat there talking, I forgot for the first time in years that I was an actress. It was so wonderful just to be myself again. Not to have to be on guard. To listen to you about your work, building and architecture. And to realize that I was falling in love with you. After that, we saw each other almost every day. And then one night in my dressing room. Who curtain calls tonight, Miss Val? I guess that means we're in a hurry to leave. You're a bright girl, Nancy. Out every night this week. We must finally think that Mr. Morell is something special. Think we'll get married this time, Miss Val? Well, when we get married, Miss Nan, you'll be the first to know it. Hello, Nancy. <laughs> oh, hello, Mr. Dunny. Well, you certainly raced through the third act, Val. I know we close tomorrow night, but you still owe your bedazzled public $4.80 worth of decent acting. Somebody picking you up? That's right. I, uh, I ran into Gunther this morning. He's very excited about your debut next season in the world of heavy drama. So am I. Of course, I hated to dampen his enthusiasm. 
But I thought it only fair to tell him he'd be very foolish to count on you. Good night, Val. Nancy. Yes, Miss Val. Tell Marion Webster I'd like to see her. Now, Miss Val? Yes, now, right away. You said you wanted to see me. Of course, I dropped everything. Marion, you've been seeing a good deal of Gordon this past week, haven't you? Only by default. You've been so busy. I realize you hate the sight of me. Well, I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. You must be desperate. I need your help. Is it that hard for you to get off the hook? Why don't you just walk out on Gordon? You don't need a passport, you know. Gordon refuses to accept the facts. You see, I thought perhaps you might... I get it. Exit Mr. Dunning, enter Mr. Michael Morell. Only Mr. Dunning refuses to exit, and you want me to give him a little push. Why not? I'd get what I want, and you'd get... What you want. Oh, let's leave out the sarcasm. You and Gordon had something once. Once, Well, it was pretty important to both of you. I came along and interrupted it. I don't believe I ever really destroyed it. If Gordon weren't so tied up in knots, he'd realize it, too. So if you want him, Marion, take him away. Now. Do you really mean that? Every word of it. Don't ever change your mind, Valerie, because once you let Gordon go, you'll never get him back. Well? Okay. Oh, by the way, I still hate the sight of you. That... that was last night, Michael. And then you came for me and brought me home. We were here, here in this very room. And you told me that you loved me. Loved me. I told Gordon I wanted to see him tonight. I asked him to come here after the performance. I wanted to tell him once and for all that he and I were through. That I was going to marry you. The show was over. I was in my dressing room when Nancy brought in the early editions of tomorrow morning's newspapers. And I saw the story that Gordon had given out. That I had turned down Gunther's offer. That I was remaining with him. I went upstairs to his office. I begged him to retract the story. And then he threatened to tell you those lies. That he and I... Oh, he was out of his mind. He started to choke me. There was a little statue on the table. I grabbed it. I... Miss Val! Miss Val! Come in, Nancy. It's Mr. Dunning, Miss Val. The stage manager just phoned. Mr. Dunning, he's been murdered. It's been a long night for Valerie Stanton, guilty of a murder she never intended to commit. But as the passing hours mount and she begins to regain something of her customary composure, Valerie realizes that no one saw her go into Dunning's office or return to her dressing room. She doesn't know, of course, what the police may have discovered, but she'll soon find out. For Captain Danbury of the Homicide Bureau has asked everyone connected with Dunning's play to assemble on the stage of the theater. How do you do, ladies and gentlemen? I'm Captain Danbury. I trust you'll bear with me in what may seem an unnecessarily prolonged and somewhat discourteous procedure. Is everyone here, Sergeant? Everyone except Marion Webster, sir. Oh, yes. I regret to say Miss Webster's in a hospital and in no condition to be questioned. Now then, uh, suppose we start. Mr. Paul Banton, you're a member of the cast. Well, I was. As you know, the play closed last night. Did you see anything last night that might be considered unusual? Anything at all? No, nothing. Your dressing room is near the door to the auditorium. You'd have seen anyone coming through that door. Yes, I imagine so. Well, did you? No. Thank you. Mr. Ernest Boyle. Yes, sir. Mr. Boyle, you were Mr. Dunning's stage manager. I've worked for Mr. Dunning for nine years. Now, if you don't mind, I'd like to know what you did last night and what you may have seen. Well, we must have had seven or eight curtain calls. You know, with the show closing at all. Well, anyway, after the house lights went up, the first thing... See, whom haven't we heard from, Sergeant? Miss Ryan, Mr. Soper, and Miss Stanton, sir. Getting back to our stage manager... Mr. Boyle, you said about an hour ago that you walked to the stage door with Miss Banton and Miss Crane and said goodbye to them. Yes, sir, I did. Then where did you go? Then I poked my head in Miss Stanton's dressing room. How long after the final curtain would you say that was? 
Mm, I don't know. Half hour, maybe. Miss Stanton was in her dressing room. Yes, sir. I told her the car was here, and she came out. So Miss Stanton came out, and, uh... Jimmy and I were leaving. We stopped Miss Stanton right here on the stage. That's Miss Ryan, Captain. Who's Jimmy? That's me, sir. I'm a friend of Miss Ryan's. I came to pick her up. You were saying, Miss Ryan? I wanted to introduce Jimmy to Miss Stanton. He was dying to meet her. <laughs> I can't say that I blame him. Uh, you did meet her? Yes, sir. Thank you. Mr. Barney Sober. Yes, sir. Mr. Sober, you are employed here as a porter? Yes, sir. Mr. Morgan mentioned before that you were in the lobby of the theater after the performance last night. There's a lot of cleaning up after a performance. Now, the only way of reaching Mr. Dunning's office, I understand, is to walk up the stairways on either side of the lobby. Is that correct? Yes, sir, that's right. You must have been working near those stairways. Mr. Sober, I want you to think most carefully. Did you see anyone going up or coming down? Yes, sir, I certainly did. Who was it? It was Marion Webster. Please. Miss Stanton? Yes, Captain? Your actions uh, after the performance are all accounted for. You were in your dressing room until Mr. Boyle took you to your car. But now about Miss Webster. You've known her for some time. Yes. She's appeared in several of Mr. Dunning's productions. What I'm trying to determine is whether or not Miss Webster was her usual self last night. I think she was. At least I didn't notice anything at all unusual. Well, I did. Why don't you ask me no questions? You're Pansy Dupont, aren't you? Who told you to come here? He did, the flatfoot, and he's right. Thought you might like to question her. Pansy sells newspapers, sir. Hangs around the theater quite a lot. It seems the guy at the stage door let her in every night. She'd bring the morning papers to Miss Stanton and Mr. Dunning and a couple of others. And I seen every single person who left through that stage door last night. And through the main door, too. Your powers of vision must be remarkable, Miss Dupont. I said I've seen everybody. And that don't include the Webster dame. And why not? On account of she was too busy upstairs conking Mr. Dunning over the head. Madam, <clears throat> you will please restrict yourself to what you really saw. You want facts? Okay, I'll give you facts. It was a case of a broken heart and she bumped him off. Oh, I Captain, I... I... Well, all very tired. I wonder if we could break for lunch. How thoughtless of me, Miss Stanton. My apologies. <clears throat> I believe I have all the information I need. From now on, ladies and gentlemen, you'll, you'll get in touch with you individually. Thank you so much for your patience. Well, uh, oh, Miss Stanton. Yes? I wonder if you can spare me a moment. Why, yes, yes, of course. Oh, uh, your glove? Oh, thank you, uh... I must have dropped it. Valerie Stanton and her velvet gloves. The trademark of your art, Miss Stanton. An art to which you've contributed so much. Thank you. You see, I've seen every play you've ever done. Down there, down there is where I usually sit row E on the aisle. That allows me space in which to maneuver my rather mountainous bulk. <laughs> well, it was about, I was about to go on my vacation when I heard the dreadful news. Gordon Dunning, the great producer, murdered. Tragic. Still more tragic is the fact that it involves all the gifted people who have given me and countless others escape from sordid reality such as, uh, or such as this. Miss Stanton, I found two envelopes in Mr. Dunning's office upstairs. One of them addressed to Miss Marion Webster, the other to you. I thought it might be personal. A simple courtesy to ask you to be present while I open and read it. The one to Miss Webster I have already opened. I, I see. But this one to you. Well, my dear, once again, I offer you my deepest gratitude for all you've done. You know I'd been lost without you. I can only hope that our next year will be as wonderful as all the others, and that together we'll go on and on. Forever yours, Gordon. And the note to... to Marion? The sentiment addressed to Miss Webster, unfortunately, was quite different. We found her last night, you know, huddled over Dunning's body in a state of acute shock. Speechless, dazed. Completely without a reason. Oh, no, no, no. Mr. Dunning was killed by blows from a statuette. Miss Webster's fingerprints were on it. But surely you don't think that Miss Webster... No. Uh, did uh, Sergeant Oliphant tell you that Mr. Morell is waiting for you? Yes, yes, he did. Allow me to take you to him. There'll be all sorts of reporters at the stage door. I'll let them pounce on me while Mr. Morell whisks you home. You be most gracious. I know what a shock this has Those been, but... Those questions, Michael, they went on and on. This Captain Danbury, do you know what he thinks? Do you know what they all think? That Marion killed Gordon, but she didn't do it. She, 
She didn't. I... Why are you so sure, dear? Well, because... Because she loved him desperately, that's why. Well, she'll have plenty of time to prove her innocence. She won't stay in a state of shock forever. No, of course not. That's right. How, how long do people remain in, in that condition? Sometimes hours, weeks, even months. It all depends. That's a terrible thing for an innocent person. Darling, let the police worry about that. But what about us, Michael? This horrible thing, what does it do to us? What could it do except bring us closer together? You've got to face things as they really are, Val, and I'm here to help you. Face things as they really are? Yes. First of all, Dunning's lawyer called. You've been made executrix under his will. Oh, no. No, that's not fair. I can't do it. I won't. But the lawyer will attend to all the details. All you have to do is go through a few papers, sign things, that's all. I don't want to do a thing like that. I couldn't. Darling, don't you think I know how you feel? You told me what Gordon Dunning once meant to you. But more than that, you've told me what I mean to you now. I want you to marry me, Val. Now, right away. Oh, no. I guess I didn't say that very well. Darling, I love you. I adore you, and I Michael, want you... Michael, I can't. Not now. All right, not now. Then tell me when. Those... Those papers you said I'll have to go through. Things at his office. Probably some in his apartment, too. I'll phone his lawyer. See that you get the key. I'll start in the morning. The sooner I get it over with... Of course, darling. Good morning, Sergeant. Uh, is it is it all right if I go up to Mr. Dunning's apartment? Well, go right ahead. I'm just here in the lobby to keep the idle curious awake. Thank you. Uh, the servants? I believe they all left last night, miss. Well, I shouldn't be very long. Thank you very much. Gordon's desk. Letters I wrote to him. What if he kept them? What if the newspapers were to... Michael. Oh, Michael, what have I done to you? I can never marry you. I killed him, Michael. I killed Gordon. A diary. Gordon's diary. Wait. But I never drink. Who's Stanton? Oh. How nice to see you again. Captain Danbury. Oh, I must have startled you. Forgive me. <laughs> I've been upstairs here in Mr. Dunning's bedroom, just looking around. I found this book at the bedside table, Hedda Gabler, by Heinrich Ibsen. Well, Miss Stanton, you look a little more rested today. Thank you. I I wouldn't have come here, of course, only that well, I have been... Executrix of the will. Yes. Yes, yes, I know. That's not a very pleasant business. <laughs> you know, you did startle me. I didn't think anyone was here. Please, if you'd rather be alone. Oh, no, no. I feel much better with you around. All these wonderful things he had. Just look in this souvenir case. The locket that Sarah Bernhardt wore in the glant. <clears throat> the dagger from Barrymore's helmet. And this velvet glove. Why, it must have been one of yours, Mr. <laughs> yes, yes, it is. Uh, oh, uh, have you heard how Miss Webster is today? Her condition is the same. I still haven't been able to question her. Excuse me, please. Oh, yes. I noticed before that Mr. Dunning had a diary. Ah, yes. Well, I'd better take it with me. I never knew that Gordon kept a diary. Really? I don't mind telling you. I wish it didn't exist. I suppose my name runs all the way through it. I suppose so. But I, I so want to protect Gordon. You know, his reputation. Naturally. If I were in your place, I'd want to do exactly the same thing. Yes. Well, I hope you'll do your best to... Uh, to see that anything embarrassing is kept confidential. Miss Stanton, I always do my best. Some more coffee, sir? Please. Oh, Herbie, you waited on Mr. Dunning last Saturday, didn't you? The night of his death. Yes, sir. He dined here, I believe, before going to the theater with Miss Webster. Yes, I always waited on Mr. Dunning. I've heard they had an awkward little scene, Mr. Dunning and Miss Webster. Well, they seem to be very friendly, see? Then Miss Stanton comes in with some gentleman, and she stops for a minute at the table. And the minute she leaves, then Mr. Dunning and Miss Webster start saying some nasty words to each other. Thank you, Herbie. Oh, I believe I'll have a piece of pastry with that coffee, please. Yes, sir. Hello, Captain. Mr. Morell, how nice to see you. Had your lunch? I was just leaving. How's my favorite actress, Miss Stanton? You haven't seen her? Not for three or four days. I think you'll find her much better. I'm so glad. Tell me, does she have any plans? Plans? 
I seem to have heard some talk of a play for Mr. Gunther. Oh, yes, but she seems quite nervous about starting with somebody new. Valerie had such confidence in Dunning. Uh, look, why don't you drop by this afternoon for a drink? Valerie's apartment. You've heard of uh, Jeff Trent? The newspaper column. Yes, he wants to interview her. And I'll be intruding. Not at all, I'm sure. Now, if you could just reassure her. That's very nice of you, Morel. I, uh, I'd be delighted to drop by. Now, look, Jeff, you're here to interview me, not to tell me what to do. I still think you're off your rocker, Val, giving up comedy to dabble in Ibsen. Now, tell me, when well, did Gunther... Up the press conference? Well, hello, darling. We won't be much longer. But you have a visitor. I'm afraid I forgot to tell you, but I asked Captain Danbury up for a drink. In heaven's name, why, darling? You knew I had this interview. He's such a nice chap, and he was so flattered by the invitation. But don't worry, I'll look after him. No, no, no. Bring him in, Michael, now. How nice of you to have me here, Miss Stanton. And I'm so glad you could tear yourself away from your work. Oh, uh, this is Mr. Trent, Captain of the Morning Express. How do you do, Mr. Trent? Oh, don't let me interrupt. Uh, Captain, I don't wish to enter where flat feet fear to tread, but you've talked to everybody in town about the Dunning murder except me. I apologize. Well, uh, my theory is that somebody on the inside hired somebody from the outside to come inside, do the job, and then go outside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we thought of that. Oh, you did? <laughs> well, suppose I take Captain Danbury out on the terrace while you deal with Jeff single-handedly, if anybody can. Come along, Captain. What's the copper doing here, Val? I'm sure I don't know. Mm. Jeff, please, let's get this over with. Oh, yes, of course. Is uh, Gunther giving you a percentage? Uh, my arrangements with Gunther are the same as I had with Gordon. Well, that should be very interesting. Now, uh, what about the rest of the cast? Well, I hope that Gunther, that he'll... Uh, what are they talking about out there, Michael and Captain Danbury? Well, I wasn't listening. Were you? They're talking about Gordon. Well, so is everyone else in town. Jeff, I'm sorry. We'll have to do this another time. Oh, but now, now look... I'll be starting rehearsal soon, and then we can have lunch regularly. Now, I'll tell you everything you want to know. You don't mean that, but under the circumstances... Thanks, Jeff. And, and I will make it up to you, really. I... Why is Danbury here? He's found out something. What's he telling Michael? What's he saying? And again, Mr. Nell, she may be affecting all this. Just to conceal her guilt. It's possible, I suppose. After all, she is an actress. <gasps> Still, she might have done it in panic. The curious thing about this murder is the nature of it. From what Val tells me, Marion has a patient, calm disposition. Marion! Marion! I understand that. But faced with the situation. Michael's that... right, Captain Danbury. Val! Well, where's Trent? Oh, gone, thank goodness. No, Captain. Marion had no more to do with this murder than I did. As a matter of fact, I could have done it. You? Yes. And I think I could build a much more convincing case against myself than circumstances have built against Marion. Go ahead, convince me. And me. Well, let me see. I went to my dressing room. Oh, yes, yes, but I didn't stay there. I went out into the empty theater, up the stairs to Gordon's office. I went in, picked up the statue... Killed him. And then came back. Came back? How? Down the same stairs? Yes, yes, of course. And nobody saw you? Luck. Sheer luck. Well, that's possible, isn't it, Captain? Yes, anything is possible. And then? Well, I returned to my dressing room in a perfectly normal manner. It was closing night. Everyone was saying their goodbyes. And nobody noticed me. Well, Captain, why haven't you placed me under arrest? Because you've left out one detail. Oh? The motive. The motive. Oh, yes. Well, I seem to have forgotten that somewhere along the way. There you are. There has to be a why, Miss Stanton. People kill out of love or hate, out of fear or rage. No, my dear. I'm afraid no jury would ever convict you. Unless you confessed. Confessed? Well, I must say that I... Oh, Nancy, we're out here. Oh, excuse me, Miss Val. Telephone call for Captain Danbury. Oh, excuse me. You can take it over here, Captain. Tired, darling. A little. You haven't forgotten we're having dinner with Gunther. Shall I call up and cancel? No, 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 don't. I'll change as soon as Captain Danbury leaves. Darling, I'm glad you brought him here after all. There's something about him that I... I'm I... so sorry. I'm afraid I must go. Your office? No, that was a hospital. Miss Webster's doctor. She's no worse. 
On the contrary, she's improving at last. Now I can talk to her. Goodbye, Morel. Thank you so much for your hospitality. Oh, uh, Captain. Yes? Marion, uh, please tell her for me that I wish her all the luck in the world. Hello, Marion. Marion, how are you? Why did you come here? I... I wanted to talk to you. To find out myself how you are. You're scared. That's a strange thing for you to say. You're scared about how much I know. Marion, you've been ill. You mustn't say things... I said you're scared about how much I know. I know what you know. Just the two of us, Valerie. I know that you killed Gordon. It's a moment later, and in the hospital room... Valerie, stunned and horrified, hears Marion Webster accuse her of Gordon Dunning's murder. You killed Gordon. But you don't have to worry. They found me in his office, my fingerprints on the statue. You see, I don't wear velvet gloves. They won't believe anything I say. But they will, Marion. They will. They'll find They'll... me guilty. You'll get away with it. Gordon's out of the way. Great career. You man, tell me how you're going to buy off your own conscience. But I've told the police, the press, everybody that I don't believe you did it. How nice of you. But it doesn't matter when you've got nothing to live for anymore. <laughs> don't talk like that, please. It's funny, really. Gordon made me lonely, miserable. He made you cold and vicious, a woman who can kill and keep quiet. I... Let her go. Yes, Valerie, run along. And keep on running so that you'll never have to face the truth. Oh, don't be afraid. I won't stop you. If you had any decency, you'd face it yourself, but you're rotten all the way through. <laughs> now get out! Why, Miss Stanton, do come in. <clears throat> Sit down, please. Captain Danbury, I... Well, uh, I can't imagine what brings you to my office. About Marion Webster. Excuse me. I want... Hello? Yes? Will you listen to me? Be quiet, please. When? Yes, I will. Thank you. I've just... I've just come I've just come to Marion. And I want to tell you that... No, no, no. I want to tell you that I... Miss Stanton, Marion Webster has just committed suicide. No. 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 She didn't... She didn't kill herself. No! 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 Well, Miss Stanton's expecting you. How's the rehearsal going? Well, they're still at it out there on the stage. Mr. Gunther decided to run through the final scene again. Going any better? You'd think it would after three weeks. I don't know, Miss. Miss Stanton seems so nervous. What's she got to be nervous about? She's an actress. Sit down, Mr. Morell. You can watch them from here. No, Valerie, no. Now, wait a minute. All right, all right, Peter. What is it this time? I'm sorry, my dear, but you've got to make Hedda feel more trapped. She's caught. She can't escape. All right, let's try it again. In a moment. Now, when you go through that door and walk off stage... What about the pause? Uh, we'll make it a shorter pause, then. And remember, the feeling to keep in mind is that Hedda Gabler is to go and you go through that door and kill herself. But I wish you'd And make... we must keep the audience dreading to hear the sound of that shot. No. No, I can't. I'm tired. I've tried. I'll never be able to play this part to suit you or myself, never. Valerie, you can play it, my dear. You've proved it a dozen times. Now, now, please, just once more. Oh, all right, all right, anything. We'll do it again. Places, please. We'll try it again from Hedda's entrance. Gunther's right, Ernie. She can be great in this. Well, we'll soon find out. We open tomorrow night. Nancy, why didn't you wake me sooner? Did Mr. Morell telephone? Oh, well, yes, Miss Val, but he said not to disturb you. Now, why don't you lie down again? Because I can't rest. I, I'm i going to the theater. But it's too early, Miss Val. Please get my things. I, well, I'll never get through this opening night. I know I won't. Oh, yes, you will. You've lived through many an opening. Right now, I can't think of a line. Not a line. Here's your purse, Miss Val. Oh, and your gloves. 
Those gloves. Where did you find them? What are you trying to do? Well, I've been looking for this pair for weeks, Miss Bell. I finally found them when I straightened out the drawer this morning. Why are you giving me these particular gloves now? Because they go with your dress, Miss Bell. But I'll get you another pair. I'll answer it. Captain Denbury. I'm sorry to call at this late hour, Miss Stanton. But I was just about to leave for the theater. Opening night, so full of excitement and nervous anxiety. I understand how you must feel. How about this black tie, Miss Van? No, no, no. No, thank you, Nancy. These will do perfectly after all. Very Stanton and the famous gloves. <laughs> well, Captain? I came here to let you know that the case is closed. Closed? But I thought the police didn't like to close a case unsolved. We don't. Since the evidence pointed to Miss Webster's guilt, and since she's dead... I see. Then everyone else has been cleared. Completely. No more questions? No more investigations? Nothing. Oh. Well, as long as you're here, there's one thing that you haven't told me. Uh, what was in Gordon's diary? Nothing that the newspapers need ever see. He adored you, Miss Stanton. You were the most wonderful woman who ever lived. Well, I suppose I won't be seeing you again. Oh, but, but I'll be seeing you tonight, Miss Stanton. My usual seat. Row E on the aisle. Oh, darling, I'm, I'm so glad you're here. Sorry I couldn't call for oh, you. It doesn't but... matter you're here now. Valerie, anything wrong? Everything's wrong. I'm all nerves. Oh, why did Gunther want to open the play here? Gordon's theater, it's too full of memories and echoes. No and... wonder you're nervous. Opening night and the closing of the case. Oh, you've heard from Danbury. It's wonderful news, isn't it, dear? Yes. Yes, it is. Now we can really be together. You'll marry me right away, this weekend. Yes, Michael. Oh, now, wait a minute. Surely you can say it with a little more enthusiasm. Oh, I'm sorry, dear. It's just that it's all such a shock. My proposing again? The case closing so suddenly. Well, it's over now, and you're coming out on the stage tonight and giving the best performance of your career. Do you really believe that? Yes, because you're no longer afraid. Afraid? I mean, of the play. Are you sure that's what you mean? Of course, darling. I know. You meant I was no longer afraid for myself. You believe I killed Gordon? Well, how long have you known? Does it matter? Why didn't you tell me? Why didn't you say something? I was waiting for you to tell me. I love you, Val. Couldn't you believe enough in my love to trust it? What did I ever do or say that made you think I did it? It was nothing you said or did. The <laughs> fact I that... played it well, don't you think, Michael? Even Danbury had to give up. Stop it, And on Val. top of it all, Marion killed herself so conveniently for me. You didn't count on that, did you, Michael? I know I didn't. Well, why don't you ask me why I killed him? Oh, have you guessed that, too? Perhaps I have. <laughs> it's almost funny. I went to such ends to hide everything from you. Darling, don't talk. You're too mixed oh, up. Oh, no, I'm not. I've lived with this thing for a long time, Michael. With the knowledge that I killed a human being. And I brought destruction to another. You've twisted your guilt all out of proportion. Your crime, Val, is being afraid to share it. Not only with me, but with society at large. You can't hide a thing like that, or eventually it will destroy you. Oh, my conscience and I have become pretty good friends. I may even learn to live with it. You'd better go now, Michael. If you want, Val. But pushing me out of your life won't be the answer. Maybe you're right. Well, I guess I'm going to have to deal with this in my own way. Well, it's going to be the greatest night of your career. Good luck, my dear. Take the foots. Take the house lights off. Thank you, Peter. Peyton going up. Looks like you've got a hit on your hands, Mr. Gunther. Well, oh, thank you. I think you may be right. She's proving your faith in her. She certainly is. Well, just one more act. I'm not too familiar with Ibsen, Mr. Gunther. In the last scene, Hedda kills herself, doesn't she? Yes, yes, she shoots herself. There's no chance that the gun she uses... I'm... I mean, a real bullet. What did you say? Oh, uh, I'm being absurd. Nothing, Gunther. Nothing. Oh, I'm so excited, Miss Bell. The greatest opening night we've ever had. Nancy, give me that pen, please, and a piece of paper. Yes, Miss Bell. Oh, and um, I want you to find Captain Danbury and bring him backstage. He may be in the lobby. If not, 
You'll find him in row E on the aisle. But shouldn't you wait till after the show, Miss Now, Lyle? Nancy, please, and hurry. There isn't much time. Yes, Miss Lyle. Captain Danbury, I killed Gordon Dunning. Motive, fear, Valerie. Miss Danton, how nice of you to have me backstage. <clears throat> I thought you might enjoy seeing the last act from the wings, Captain. It's a wonderful night, wonderful. Oh, and, uh, and perhaps you may like to have these. Miss Danton, your gloves? Two minutes, Miss Stanton, two minutes. Excuse me, please, Captain. Places, everybody, places, place back there. Give me immense pleasure, dear Hedda. No, thank you. I'm a little tired. Hello, Captain. I think I'll go oh, inside. Oh, Mr. Murray, what are you doing backstage? Hedda, Miss Stanton's invitation. I have never seen a play from the wings before. Oh, you've dropped something? Here, a slip of paper. I must have fallen out of one of these gloves. A note, Captain. Is Valerie writing you notes? Well, what did she say? Later, Merrill, later. We are missing the dialogue. But how am I to get through the evenings here? Oh, I dare say Judge Breck will be kind enough to keep you company. Every blessed evening, Hedda, and with all my heart. We shall get along famously. We too. Don't flatter yourself, my dear Judge. That's it, Eddie. Bring it down. Bring down the curtain. Captain. Red shot. The play had to commit suicide, and the curtain comes down. Yes, yes. But I, excuse me, but I better get up. Any curtain call? How stupid of me! Why she's bowing to them out there? She's smiling. Okay, Eddie, take it down. Uh, Miss Fenton, please don't walk away. That applause. Captain, I'm ready to go with you now. We, oui. Mr. Boyle. Yes. Bring up the curtain once more, Mr. Boyle, once more for Valerie Stanton. Uh-huh.